Hey everyone, Christine here. And today, because we're into fall, although you'd hardly know it by all of these leaves I collected from my yard, um, there are a few that are changing, but honestly, this fall is really super crazy strange. And part of it is that the leaves are going straight to brown. So don't tell Vermont Tourism I'm letting you know this, but normally this leaf would not be eaten and it would also be a bright yellow. Um, this is from a particular maple in my yard, but you can see it's already going straight to brown. And this was a pretty leaf on that tree. The rest were all already almost all brown. And then a few um, red maples here and they're beautiful, but most of the tree is either still green or kind of a more muted red. So that being the case, for what I'm doing today, it doesn't matter because the color has no indication or no influence on, on what we get. But um, so normally at this time of year, I pull out the jelly plate and I do some prints with the leaves. Um, I particularly like using birch leaves because they deliver nothing during eagle printing. So this is a process in which they really do shine. So I want to try to, to capture the feel of autumn without being autumn-y, if that makes sense. Um, I don't want it all orange and yellow and red, if, if that makes, um, makes any sense at all. So what I have here, this is a piece of wood that I cobbed together. Um, it's a piece of wood with another piece of wood glued to it. That's about the height of my um, jelly plate because I want to be able to register the paper. And so I, I made this after I saw that Jelly Arts has an actual registration guide that you can buy, but it's a piece of plastic and it's $50. And it just seemed like, well, I can make something workable myself, which I did. So you all know what a jelly plate is by now, I suspect. Now we'll pull this one out. And I always leave mine covered with a clean sheet of copy paper on both sides. And that's how they suggest you leave it in your, in storage. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I have some painter's tape. I have a stack of scrap paper, which is actually um, copy paper and I tend to um, clean my brayer on good paper because you wind up with some really beautiful combinations of colors so then I just use it for other purposes. A uh, couple of brayers and some leaves and some down here I have some I'm going to work today on HP Premium 32. I like this paper for this process because it takes a really sharp print. I also use with much happiness the uh, emult, uh, mixed media um, paper like Canson, um, but I'm not using that today. So let's see how we begin. So what I first want to do is lay down a color on my first sheet of paper. So I'm going to choose a drift and it's going to be simple, a simple color um, without a lot. I'm not going to add a lot to it. So I'm just going to drip a little here. And I'm, I'm going to take that back. I'm working today with a couple of metallics. So I've got quinacridone gold, which is luscious and spectacular, also a little pricey. And then I've got some cheaper craft paint, um, just deco art paint, and a champagne gold and a, a rich espresso. And each of them have that glittery feel. And that's really what I'm hoping is going to impart the feel of fall into, into these prints. Even though you can see I'm using blue to start because I want a contrasting color that feels like fall, but isn't orange and red. <laughs> so this is going to be our first, our first pass. I'll show you. I have a few things on my plate. I probably could have cleaned it before I started, but we're not going to do that now, are we? We've started. So what I do is I, I go up my plate with some paint and put the paper down. And now I'm going to tape it to this piece of wood. Now, you don't need this. You can use just any surface that you work on normally as long as you're happy to tape paper to it. Um, yeah, you don't need this. This is just for my purposes because I tend to be a little spastic and move stuff around a lot. So this way I 
won't move it. It like so if I do move it, the paper goes with the plate. That's what I mean. All right, so I can use a clean brayer and give this a little love. Let me move this out of the way because this is the direction my paper is going in. Okay. Now let's see what we have here. Should be a nice, bright, happy blue color. I'm gonna let it stay vibrant. It picked up some stuff I'd left on the plate from the last prints. Okay, so you saw how this moved while I was pulling that off. That's okay, because that was not the, the pull that needs to be registered to anything. Now we wanna be more careful as we put things down that we keep everything um, where it was and try to align everything as exactly as we can. It never works perfectly. All right, so I've got this blue color going on here. So I'm going to add some red and some champagne for the glitter. And again, this is just regular craft paint. Nothing too remarkable about it. Oops, come back. See, that's why I use this board. So the paper and the plate always stay together. All right, that's probably good. I have a lot of gold there. I feel like I want a little bit more red there. So I'm using this burgundy color, which has a little blue in it. It's a little purpley for a red, meaning it's a cool red, uh, not a warm fire red. All right, that should be good. So now I'm gonna clean this off a little, clean that off a little, though it's a little late for that one. All right, so now I need to put my leaves down. So I'm, again, as I mentioned, going to use birch leaves because I feel like they really shine with this process. Whereas with eco printing, they give me nothing. No color, no form. It's very surprising when I get a um, birch leaf print in an eco print. All right, so I'm, I'm sending all of these leaves facing downward because it's fall, and that's how leaves should go in the fall. Let's see, I have a couple here still on stems. And because I like odd numbers, there we go. All right, so now I'm just going to put this paper back and try and pick up that red. Now this is the point at which we want to be a little bit more mindful of our movement of between the paper and the plate. You know, again, I can move this as much as I want. That's why I made that. But you do want to be careful. I'll give it a nice brayer layer here. And let's see. Oh, pretty. Yes, and enough gold to make it shimmer but not crazy. So now I'm going to pick these up and I tend to use tweezers because I'm not always very careful and I've got super fat fingers. Well, they seem fat when I'm doing this kind of work. All right, so this little booger here is gonna need a little love, lovely. And lovely. All right, so now that we've taken them off, I'm going to put this back on, try and pick up these vein prints. And again, if you just sort of let it roll, it usually lines up naturally. So let's see. Try and get all the scrumptiousness out of these leaves. Should be good. Let's see. What have we? Beautiful. Look at that. Excellent. There we go. A little fall, but a cool color to add a little sophistication. 
and I'm going to play around some more with some of these leaves. Now see here, there's a few leaf prints left. That will come up on my next pull for the first layer of my next, next print. So now I'm going to take this off and put it on the drying rack. I save the tape. All right, so as I said, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm going to use, I think I used a drift for that. So I think I might do another blue, but also add some gold to it. Or maybe I'll add some of that espresso gold. I really do like the blue and the red together. So this is a little bit bright. Yeah, I want to tone that down a little. So I'm going to add, I have a suede here, which is just kind of a dull tan, but it doesn't have a lot of yellow. It stays in the cooler family. So it should, yeah, just make this more of a, uh, like a, almost a pale, pale turquoise. I could add some white to it, although I don't have any white here, so apparently I can't add some white to it. And clearly I have something on my brayer because that's happening. So we'll pick that off. Clearly I have other things on my brayer, but that's all right. These prints are pretty organic. They can take a little bit of shrapnel. All right, new piece of paper. Move that over. I'm gonna put this down. Oh, I was gonna add a little gold to this layer. That's okay. I'm gonna do a couple more. So you can see how easy it is with this method to simply lay the leaf down, get your first print, keep your paper registered, pick up the leaves, and get those veins that have been pressed into the plate. I really love doing this. And once you get going, it is very difficult to stop. All right, so you see, I did pick up some of the red from that last, that's beautiful. We're just gonna leave that and now I'm going to go on. So here, and a lot of that is not gonna show when I'm done, unless I do something really light, which I'm not expecting, but one never knows. So I am going to add some orange, cause you know, it is fall and a little bit more red because I love that combination of the red, the deep red with this blue. Now we can add some quinacridone gold. Now this stuff is a little bit different. Oh, let me get this booger out of here. It's very translucent. So a lot goes a long way and the shimmer is a little bit different than the craft paint. So you can see it's, you can see through it. So I'm going to not over, oops, this is stuck to here. I'm going to not over bray this or brayer this um, because I want to keep that variation of color that you see. All right, so that's, I think, going to be good enough. There's a little bit more paint on here than I normally like. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit more off. All right, now let's do some leaves. So I've got these big leaves here. I mean, these leaves here, they're going to get covered up, so I have to not be in love with them. I'm going to take, those are birch leaves. So I think I'm going to take some maples this time. Oh, I've got that line there I don't like at all. Let me see if I can get rid of that. And it's still there a little bit, but we'll live with it. There we go, one leaf. And remember too, you wanna to put the leaves vein side down. If I didn't say that, I apologize, um, because you want the most impression you can get inside the plate, on the plate side. Pull that off there. Oh, I just broke my stem. All right, so we're going with that. Let's see what this does. Now I'm going to put this down. These are much heftier leaves than the birch. So you wanna press as sternly and maybe even give it a little prayer. Now what happens often is that you get this puddle on either side of 
the stem and especially if you use a lot of paint so I'm hoping that's not going to happen this time but when it happens it happens all right that should be good pick it up let's see what we have oh that is really beautiful now I could leave this this way and I'm considering doing that because I really like these other leaves that are in here um what do you think so now because now we're going to pick this up and i have these leaves that i can get but i think mm, this is tricky this is tricky okay i'm going to go for it i'm going to try and pick these up I, I mean i know i can pick them up on this same sheet i don't know if that was the smartest choice artistically because i could have left that um That, that print that was there for another print, for my next print. But, you know, we have to make our decisions, take our chances. So hopefully this will still be beautiful, and I imagine it will be. Let's pull it off. Yeah, it wasn't a bad decision. Look at that. Gorgeous. And I love that it feels like fall to me, but it's not all orange and red. So I'm going to take this off. All right, so now some of that is still there, so we'll be able to pick that up. Let's see, what should we do next? All right, so this pistachio color is another color I really love. Um, but I'm first going to go white, um, wash this brayer, because you see this, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a, there's some paper, and there's a, a whole dried area of paper there. And that's going to impact my um, spreading the paint. So give me a second. Okay, so let's see what we can make happen here. There's this light pistachio cover color that's one of my all-time favorite colors. In fact, I need to get some more because clearly I'm getting low on it. And so that. And I'm going to add a little of this espresso, which is going to make it a little bit darker, which is okay. I'm going to have some fun with it. I don't want too much, just enough for the glitter. And again, I don't want to make it really dark, so. I'm going to try and keep this a little bit more modeled for the first layer. But I find I don't like big contrast areas in my first layer because then that shows differently. Oh, look, another widget. Let me get this off there. Um, shows differently with the print, the second layer. So I'm just particular that way. All right, so there's that. And it's probably going to pick up some of that lower, that lower print. Now let's see, let's put this down. There we go. Use some tape as expected. And I tend to not press it hard on the paper because then it could tear the paper when you remove it, even the painter's tape. So I press it hard on the wood, but just let it be gently on the paper. Okay, let's see what color we get from this. And if it picked up that leaf ghost print from the last go. And again, this one, it's not so important that we stay in registration. Oh, that looks really pretty. That is really pretty. So I might be tempted to just leave that and build something else on that in the future. Um, because I like that so much, the ghosting experience. I'm going to do that. So I don't know if anything I might do to that, to this print would improve it. Now I probably should also be showing you these prints closer up. Um, and I, I can do that. This was the last one. Sorry about that. That, um, that we pulled that I really am in love with. So it's got gold and red and tan and brown and then this pop of blue. Really nice. And then the first one with the birch leaves, same thing. 
and I don't know if you can see, but it's got that shimmer of the uh, champagne gold paint. Now here's the difference between the quinacridone gold and the craft paint is that the quinacridone tends to be more translucent, so its effect is much more subtle, equally as beautiful, but not as, as glittery, if, if that's the right word. So, all right, so now we're gonna start this one again. And I'm going to, what am I going to do? I need to put a base color down. So, do I start with pistachio or suede or, or what? I think pistachio and maybe some of this adrift blue. We'll do both, how's that? And then we're gonna go big orange and red on the top of it. All right, so let's see what color we get here. And I'm going to try to not, see I put too much in, that's the issue. I, I don't like this much paint on the plate. I like to keep a really sheer layer of paint. So let's see, add this, oh, there I picked up something. Okay, well, we'll let that be what it is. Yeah, I got something going on over here somewhere. Oh, there it is. So you do want to try, if you can, to locate and remove these little widgets of shrapnel. Because it will. No, it's still on there. All right, well, this is a lovely color now using the two, the pistachio. So it's a much more, again, more muted blue. So let me get my paper. I'll leave those. Normally I would go at it, but I don't want to let the paint dry too much. All right, you can see, see how the page is moving? That's an indication to me that I have too much paint on my plate, um, which is really not a surprise I knew that. So let me just that off there because my paper's gonna hit that. So let's use tape. And again, I put it lightly on the paper and harder on the wood. Yeah, this is peeling right off because there's so much paint on it. But that's okay. I mean, peeling off is good, it's easy. All right, so now, let me clean that off a little bit. Now, let's do something bold. All right, so we are gonna do orange, red, a little, do we want some espresso gold? It's gonna deepen and dull the colors a little. So I'm just gonna put a little bit. I'm going to take the other brayer. Yeah, this is a lot of paint too, so let me get rid of some of that. And get a nice even. I can tell when when the brayer doesn't move, it usually means there's too much paint. So here. Yeah, this guy should be rolling. There we go. All right. So this is going to be interesting to me because now it has a lot of brown in it because I rolled it so often, but there was just so much paint. So let's take some tulip, leaf, tulip tree leaves. And let's put one going up and we'll put one coming down and try not to move them, it's hard. All right, let's put a few more. No, we're gonna leave this very graphic. So I'm also orienting the page in this direction as I am, because I'm expecting I will use these as um, journal spreads. So having them go horizontal and designing them in that direction means I'll have more to choose from. 
when I go to use something from this batch in a journal. All right, so I have a little bubble going on there. It should not matter. Let's see. Oh, so pretty. All right, so now let's get these leaves off. Equally graphic and lovely. I have to get another place to put these. So now I'm just going to roll this down. I'm not sure why this didn't pick up that paint, but I'll give it a little bit more encouragement on this go. Let's see if it does. All right, let's see what we've got. Oh, very graphic, almost batik looking. All right, that's also very pretty. So let's take the tape off and show you. Yeah, I can tell by the weight of the paper that there's more paint on this. So you can see, but it's very beautiful and it's gonna make a great journal page. Okay, now there's a lot on here and I'm going to leave it on here. I'm going to add some color. I'm going to do something bright on the bottom this time. Okay, some orange. That's really bright. Ooh, this is going to be my base layer. It's going to pick up some of the leftover, the remainder paint from my last pull. I feel like this is not sitting right. That's why I'm not getting a good. Okay. All right, so let's see what we have here. All right, orange. You're on deck. Let's see how we do. Oh, gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. So you see a little bit of an insinuation of the leaves here. That's nice. Now, what do we do on top of that? I, okay, so this, I think we're going total burgundy and gold. And the question is quinacridone or, or this. This is sparklier. Yes, let's go sparklier because the orange is pretty cool. I mean, pretty matte. And that's something too I'll mention. I like using matte paper, I'm um, sorry, matte paint more than um, any other on this for this process. And if I can get chalk paint, which some of these are also, um, that's even better because the chalk paint on paper with this process almost feels like plaster. And it certainly gives the look of plaster. So if you can't get chalk finish, get matte. Well, you can get anything you like, but for my preference, if you can't get chalk, you get matte. Okay, so now I've got the red on there. Let me give a little a few splotches of this. This is going to be very fall with no um, yeah, no blue, which we'll see how I like that. I've been really digging the blue. All right, so now we have to pick some leaves. So let's pick, oh, we could do maples again. Well, these might be fun, all of these little maples because that's very fall, right? I'm just going to drop them as if maybe they were falling and remembering that we want to keep the vein side down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, we're going to 
cheat and put eight. I don't think anyone will think us of us poorly. Okay, here we go. All right, do 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 do. Let me give it some brayer. Trying to not move any of the leaves underneath, which typically they don't move. Once you're down, you're down. After that first sort of rub and burnish, they don't typically leave. Well, I should say that looks like autumn, and I love the ghosted area in there, but you can see how the gold isn't like gold. It, this quinacridone is so much more translucent that it's in there, but not the same as the craft paint. So let me just get all these babies up. And I like to use the tweezers because I'm pretty lame when it comes to picking up things and tying knots and doing other things. But I dare to be lame. But it actually is one of my slogans <laughs> because if you're being lame, that means you're trying things that are hard or just not normal, so to speak, or not what, what society considers normal. All right, kids, this, I have the feeling, is going to be astoundingly beautiful. Let's have a look. Oh, pretty perfect. Yeah, there, very fall. Very traditional fall, and traditional fall is beautiful. But I'm still going back to one more with the blue. And then we're gonna go a little wild. So this one, I feel like I wanna do one really bold. I've done a few here now that are kind of subdued and subtle and sophisticated, which was my goal today, because I have a very specific use for them in mind. But now we're going to be a little bit more wow. So base layer going to be orange, a little yellow ochre, which is going to tone down the orange a little because it's a little bit of a browner yellow. And I don't want to lighten it up too much. I'm not ready. Let's put some gold right in there, right in our base. Let me get that widget off there. There we go. And now we use this one and do it wild. So I'm not going to do it all the way. I'm going to leave it blotchy and as long as it's covered, I'm not sure that is, but it, that could be a ghost print from the other leaf. Who knows? It'll show itself when it's ready. Put that in. Yep. Too much paint, I can feel it moving. See how the paper's moving? Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it all works. Okay. There we go. There we go. And ta-da! Let's have a look. Ooh, happiness. All right, so that's a lot of color on there. And that's going to get picked up in that next pull. So. Thinking about that, I'm still going to use blue on it and maybe a little lighter, a little of that burgundy as well. Because if we got a little purple, it would not be the end of the world. In fact, it would be very fall. So let's see. And I guess I'll have to use this brayer. So again, I'm not going to over bray it because I want 
to, I want those smears, but I don't want that smear. I'm going to try and get rid of that line. There we go. Okay. That line is also going to bother me, so give me a second. Now that line's going to bother me. So every time you do it, you know, you're just blending the color more, and I don't want to do a lot of that. So for this, I haven't done anything with the black oak leaves yet, but I'm really feeling like this wants to be this big, bold thing. But there aren't a lot of veins on that. So let's go with the black oak, or black walnut, rather. And again, I'm just going to put them down where they might have fallen had they fallen from the tree. Need that one. I'm just going to put a lot. These two being the same way bothers me, but they're already there. Oh, I don't like that either. <laughs> that one I shouldn't have dropped yet. So I'm just going to straighten this out. Put this off the top. We'll work on that in a second. Yeah, I'm going to try and pick this one up. I really don't like it. And I don't think I've pressed it down enough where it should matter a lot. Yes, good. Because it needs to be different there. Much better. So let me see a few more here. We're really going to just fill this page up, which is going to be interesting for trying to get it registered. But I have faith in me, sort of. Okay, same with this one. It didn't actually hit. So there and there. All right, I would like something coming off that corner. So let me get a good, a good stem leaf here. I'm going to put that right there. All right, there we go. It's a little busy, but I think the boldness of these colors can handle it. I like that I can do this in the fall. I mean, I live in one of the best places on the planet for fall, so it becomes apparent to me as the colors change that it's um, that we're heading into winter eventually. So enjoy the the fireworks because you're not going to get to keep them long. Okay. Uh-oh, that one's stuck. A couple of them stuck. Ooh, look at that. That is happening. That should be okay. All right, so now I have to remove these. I'll try and do that with some grace and speed, but not too much because I don't want to mess them up. hanging off the bottom, which is much better. All right. Fantastic. Now we just try and lay it back down where we think it was before. And I did get a little bit of a crease here, so we'll see if I was able to smooth it out. to hope that it's inconsequential. All right, I think it's time. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That's pretty fun. So let me get it off here. The orange is super translucent under here. I know that this light is like pretty terrible. I don't know if you can see this print and just how shimmery beautiful it is. All right, well, I, I know I've got some print going on here. I'm going to take that off with just some, a light color, I think. 
and I'm going to finish up. So there you see my method and, and the tools I use and the, the colors I chose for today's session. Um, but you should just go and grab some leaves. Again, they don't have to be fall leaves. They could be any leaves. They could be dried leaves. They work great too. Um, but go have some fun. I'll see you next time. So here I've put some suede, suede color and um, some quinacridone, quinacridone gold. And it gets this beautiful yellowy color. And to that I'm going to add nothing because that is going to be my base. So let me get my sheet. Let's put this on. Oh, yeah, a little dirty. And I'll do this. Hello, spider. Well, you're interesting. Are you going to come play with us? I think you should go on the floor. Go on the floor. Go on the floor. And then don't scare me later. Because that's, that's how spiders die in my house, if they kind of ambush me. Other than that, they can live. Oh, nice. So it's picking up the ghost print of those of, of several different leaves. Now, let's decide what to put on here. So what I think I want on here is gold, 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 and red. Okay, so I'm going to put the red. And a touch of blue, just a little bit, like the smallest little drop. That came out more than I wanted because the paint's gunking up. Okay, so that and gold, the champagne. Let's see if we can make this feel like fall. Oh yeah, we're going nice and bold here. All right. Now I want something big. This was the one I felt like it did not have enough vein to be viable. This one has a little bit more. <laughs> Just trying to make sure I don't have any other. I'm going to do this leaf again. You can always absolutely re reuse leaves. So I'm going to use these. I liked, I liked what they did. I'm going to put that one there. And this one, I'm going to take this off because the stem is broken. And I'll have this one coming down through the center. All right. So now I need to be careful of that. And let's see what we get. Get around the stems, around all the edges. Let's see. Very muted. Oh, but pretty. All right, that is really lovely too. So now I'm going to take off the leaves and reprint this. That's beautiful. I'm putting it down this way and making sure we press everywhere where there were stems. And pick it up. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. Gorgeous. All right, so there's my last one for today. A little bit bolder, still feels fall, and yet it has some atypical colors in it from purple to blue to orange and yellow and red. There you have it. All right, kids, go create, be awesome.